So good afternoon, um, my name is Peter Childs and I'm delighted to introduce the Dyson School of Design Engineering. And I have an agenda. Um, these are some things which we're going to run through, talk a little bit about design engineering, talk about two of our programmes and change, which is something that this audience is particularly good at and perhaps a challenge to you as well. So a little bit about what I do. Um, I'm a portfolio worker, many of us are. So uh, I do do the academic thing. You can see some of my books down the right hand side there. And you can see some of the 2000 designs that I've been associated with down the left hand side as well. And as well as being a professor, I also sit on an awful lot of committees and I've helped set up and run seven companies at the moment. And one of the delights I've had over the last 10 years is helping about 300 businesses uh, come into being through the Innovation Design Engineering Programme, through Enterprise and Create Activities at Imperial, and through Global Innovation Design. You're going to see some of them in this presentation. You're going to see some of them uh, in, uh, promoted later on, and we'll probably steal each other's uh, thunder. But many of you probably have seen Uhu, the edible water um, held within the Nalgenet gel coming to a bar near you soon, probably not with water in it. And this is one company that we rolled out about six years ago. I'll let Dana tell you about it. My name's Dana Cavell and I'm the robot manager here at Qbot. Here at Qbot, we build robots for the construction industry. This here is Annie. Annie and her other robotic friends are used to apply underfloor insulation to suspended timber floors. A team of installers will arrive at your property, they will get out the spray equipment, they will then make an access hatch within the property, they will attach the spray equipment to Annie, insert her into the void, she will then survey the area, and then we will go through and perform the insulation. We then measure the depth and thickness of the insulation to ensure job well done. A lot of energy is wasted within the UK by heating old, poorly insulated properties. If we insulate the 8 million properties within the UK with suspended timber floors, it's the equivalent CO2 savings of shutting off two power stations. At the moment, QBOT is working with local authorities and housing associations, but the plan for the future is to deliver this service to everyone across the UK. And then the world. Said too creepy. But that's not going to be in, is it? We absolutely left it in. She, she helped us win uh, the Ashton Award for Sustainability um, in the built environment this year. Um, we, we now employ about 30 people at QBOT in Wandsworth. We make our robots here in the United Kingdom. Um, QBOT employs eight, um, or between six and eight, um, or has em employed between six and eight Imperial alumni. And the CEO is an Imperial alumni. So a little bit about Dyson School of Design Engineering. Um, behind you there, you walk past our building um, on your way up Exhibition Road. So we have this wonderful 1908 Edwardian Baroque building, uh, very uh, 19th century on the outside, very 21st century on the inside, filled with state-of-the-art um, laboratories and facilities. And we do five things within the school. We run an undergraduate program in design engineering. We run two double masters, run jointly with the Royal College of Art in innovation design engineering, global innovation design, and we do design engineering research and practice. And we've chosen to define design engineering. It's new, and we call it the fusion of design thinking, engineering thinking and practice within a culture of innovation and enterprise. And hopefully today we will have a dialogue about innovation and enterprise, and we very much hope that it's multi-way. Just to give you a bit of an introduction to the MEng, and this is my characterization of the educational pathway within 30 seconds or so. First year is about giving upskilling our students in electronics, mechanics, energy, computer aided design, uh, sketching, and design. And then the second year we go cyber physical um, with coding and actuators and um, cross-disciplinary design engineering projects. Third year, the students get lots of choices as to what they do with lots of electives, and they do a futures-orientated group project. 
They then go on to an industrial placement. In the fourth year, we have a module which runs across the whole year called Enterprise Rollout, where the students take one of their propositions and ex get it ready for exposure to public reaction. And they also do a contemporary project. One of the masters that we run is called Innovation Design Engineering. And just because I'm a little bit mischievous from, a, for, uh, from time to time, I couldn't resist putting up a picture of the lady who helped us launch this degree um, 38 years or so ago. And in terms of what we're doing in innovation design engineering, we're forming innovators with skills in precision analysis who are capable of designing for people, who have skills in prototyping, whether it's a physical or non-physical prototype or proposition, and prog we're progressive with purpose in our approach. And if you're wondering the pictures on the bottom, yes, they are well known to you, but they're also associated with our 500 alumni. And uh, innovation design engineering uh, is one of the crown jewels associated with Imperial and the Royal College of Art with this amazing heritage um, of exemplar products and services which have been rolled out over the years. And just because I can, I'm going to steal a little bit of the thunder of one of the future presenters. What I love about the Abnormal team is that they are doing generative design, absolutely 21st century, absolutely state of the art. So we're all used to computer aided design, but of course now we're no longer on our own and we can go beyond to co-design with state of the art machine learning and AI and they'll tell you more about that in a moment. So my last provocation to you on change of course, we live in a challenging world. And here's the provocation. Are we going to be subject to change? Or are we going to be that supplier of change? And being the supplier of change is our world, our world of design engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.